6.33 p.m. Uh, Montpelier Roxbury Board of School Directors. Now all masked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, first order of business is public comment. Uh, does anyone wish to speak? I see we have a couple members. I know Rhett, you're slotted for after the consent agenda. Um, and, and do we have anyone on Zoom? Looks no. Like no. Um, okay. Um, we do want to add an executive session uh, to the agenda for the purpose of appointing a new board member, and then we also have a um, contract issue to discuss. Um, any other plausible agenda item, Mia? There on the. Um policy monitoring report there was a third policy in our board packet but it's not on the agenda and it's one of the ones from the last meeting I believe it's the dissection one yeah. so, so maybe just that. and there was a second from last meeting that wasn't in that our, isn't, all, isn't in the packet but I think so I'm wondering if we should just move to put both policy monitoring reports from last meeting onto tonight's agenda but we don't have a report for that other the one. Well, we did from last but nobody could open it. Oh, that's right. So, we so can't, my, we can't my suggestion was to add dissection to the policy monitoring report list. Um, that's the one you were going to check to see if, had you guys done that in a policy? That's why it wasn't on there. Yeah. Oh, we yes. discussed it. I don't think we, we discussed it. Oh, I thought, okay. No, I think it's that's, fine to move forward with the yeah. monitoring report. Yeah. It's just that oh, we. Oh, the monitoring report. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We were going to have it as the. Uh, for first, first reading. First reading, yeah, that's yeah. why I was yeah. confused on that. Yeah. So add it to the policy monitoring list. List, okay. So we'll have three on that. Um, all right, do you have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move that we approve the consent agenda. Uh, do you have a second? I'll second it. It's Jill. Um, any discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great, thanks. Um, and then uh, next item, new board applicant. We got uh, one letter of intent from Rhett Williams. And um, you're very welcome to take a few minutes to speak to your candidacy, uh, answer any questions um, if you wish. You don't have to, but um, opportunity. Well, I, uh, <laughs> not to put you on the spot, right? No, yeah, I, no. I, you know, I, um, and you just refer to your letter, too. It was right. Well, I mean, well the done. letter kind of says, uh, if anyone didn't read the letter, um, you know, I was a teacher for four years in Queens, um, learned a lot, ha had, had some struggles we can talk about another time. Um, but it was part of the Teach for America. Oh, yeah? uh, yeah, New York City Teaching Fellow Program. My so husband did the Teaching Fellows. Yeah. yeah, so I was a teaching fellow. Um, and then, you know, family issues move towards psychiatric care, to mental health care. So that's what the field that I'm in now. And I'm the Director of Education and Training at the Psychiatric Care Hospital next to CVMC. Um, and I've always thought that this was the public service that I would end up in because of my background and because of my interest in the schools and because of my interest in the future of the school system and um, the vision process. And there's an opening and there's a need and there's not a lot of people stepping forward and the time is now. So, you know, my, I just want to do the best job I can. I don't have an agenda of any kind. I want to be open to the best ideas and, you know, hear the bad ones and um, put in what work I can to the best ability that I can and try to help in any way. That's about it. Excellent. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Any questions for Rhett? Um, and you're welcome to stick around. We we will formally appoint an executive session. Um, 
the outcome will probably not be a cliffhanger. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank you for yeah. 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 submitting your letter, and I think it's great that you're willing yeah. to step up. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it sounds like yeah. we're all very lucky to have yes. your interest. Absolutely. Um, great. No, thank you, Rhett. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, so, board discussion. Uh, Planning for community outreach for the board. I know everyone gave ideas. Uh, Amanda very kindly put together kind of a list of assembled ideas. Um, I don't know, Amanda, if you want to talk about your list a little, but maybe have Amanda talk about our list and then we can um, kind of think about uh, an outreach plan, and which will probably be various people taking groups on the list and, and planning to uh, reach out to them and do some listening and come back to the board. So, yeah, I mean, I send it out around. Uh, it's a list that, and I compile everybody's ideas. Uh, so, kind of sit in three components. One was like the in school outreach to students, to families. Uh, another one is uh, extending that outreach to in community sessions with the various organizations in both towns and, um, and like the places that people frequent. The third one is just like tabling at events, um, you know, community events that happen, places that people congregate, like the farmer's market, art walks, and things of that sort. And then the third piece of it, well, four pieces, I guess. Another one is the community organizations, which I already um, talked about. And then the, the rest is just marketing flyers using the various outlets, like Front Porch Forum, uh, some of the local newspapers like Time Argus and, and that. So I was hoping that, you know, we can use some of those ideas and then decide, you know, like how we go about. Um, I, I see as like the next steps just together coming up with some questions that we want to answer so that it's, it's not so open-ended but also not closed um, so that we can, when we do uh, analysis and qualitative data that, that we have some sort of framework and that it's not such out there. So that's what I was thinking. I don't know what people think. Yeah, it sounds very, the other thing I want to clarify too is, and we had uh, Amanda talked about this, but um, obviously this is important for the SR3 discussion, but um, we were thinking of just framing it in terms of budget priorities in general so we can not, not only use it for the budget, but we also thought it might be less confusing to the public if we were trying to explain various buckets of money rather than just, you know, stating the type of, I think make clear the type of spending that ESSER can be spent on so people are thinking about those priorities, but then also just getting ideas in general so the discussion is not, well, we can't spend on that or maybe we can spend on that, exactly. but just, just to get uh, the priorities. And then, you know, obviously if, if ESSER funds aren't appropriate for things that rise to the top, you know, there are there are other funds in our budget discussion that, that we can talk about. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Ahmad or just about the idea process in general? Um, how do people want to go about divvying up groups? We could either take some now and maybe you know, if we don't um, get to them all, we can, you know, come back and if you have some later, we can do it by email. Uh, forgot to mention one thing is that also the idea to have some uh, affinity spaces for different folks, BIPOC folks or families that have kids um, with IEPs, 504 plans, you know, diversity. Um, and there are some community members that might be interested in helping facilitate those, just to give people trust um, and you know like, uh, a little more opening to kind of share feelings and things. So that could be, and you know, we could probably ask LGBT folks to also like lead some of those conversations, so that it is more open to space. And that's why it's important to kind of come up with some questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like we have two things. One to come up with some common questions, and maybe we can do that again by 
Mm -hmm. Just email them, and then it might take a little time to set up some of set up some meetings. So, if there are groups or organizations that people kind of know right now, they'd love to take. You might, maybe we can claim them. Um, otherwise, we can. Uh, you also just claim them by email. Yeah. And if there are some that you're missing, yeah, you know, we can add them now. You can send them to me. That was not a full list. Um, I am, I've reached out to the Main Street Middle School Caregivers Alliance, and so I know I'm going to start going to those meetings and helping. Um, they want more, um, they want briefings on what's happening at the school board, but, and then I can use those, that time to also receive feedback. Yeah, awesome. So I can do that one. I would be willing to do the high school. I need to know what the status of the high school career was. Boosters. Boosters, yeah. It's more athletic. Yeah, that's still worth talking to. I know it's kind of evolved over the years. <coughs> I'm meeting with Jolinda tomorrow, who's like the pie, the pie group president. So I can talk to her about how they can support. And then I'm part of the UES Caregivers Alliance. So. I love the idea of having like a regular presence at places like the farmer's market. I think it might be good to have some sort of like sign up genius or something going where, you know, we could just rotate through and just have a table there that people could talk. I don't know if that's what we're picturing at the farmer's market or the coffees, you know, that kind of thing. I'm happy to partake, but I'm not going to do it all myself. We probably have to reach out to the organizers of the farmer's market. I mean, yeah. I think, you know, we could do it in a more like casual way, but it's going to be awkward unless we have a, an official presence. So here are the tasks. All right. Then. I can, uh, <laughs> I can reach out to the farmer's market and, um, figure out that logistics, and then you can set up a genius, and people can sign up for a Saturday that they are able to go there and enjoy some coffee. Yep. And like just flyer. Mm -hmm. Kristen, is there a farmer's market that happens weekly or bi-weekly in Rockford? There's not a farmer's market. Um, kind of tried to um, develop like an inventory of like gathering places, you know, I mean, um, we're, you know, Roxbury is a bit of a different community in terms of what it's downtown is, looks like. Um, so, you know, places that get, I guess, like high traffic places in Roxbury, as much as there would be traffic, you know, like the country store and the town office and, um, you know, the, the school certainly. Um, so at the post office, actually, so, you know, something I've just been thinking about, you know, if it's a private, you know, business, obviously we would need to get permission um, from the store owner and then also the post office being a federal building. I don't know what that would look like. So just needing to do some outreach from, you know, the few uh, well-trafficked places that we have here in town to see if we could, you know, set up and do some outreach. Um, so I know that there's also the community center, which would just be a matter of arranging with the um, town, uh, our town administrator, Tammy and just getting permission, I think, to just set up there, essentially. Do so, yeah. Do you want to check that? What's that? Do you want to check sure. that? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I could reach out to someone on FOMS and see if they want to do, like, another kind of listening session like we did pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. With who? With the Friends of Montpelier oh, Schools group. Um, I'll take the um, the basement teen center. Reach out to somebody there to see how I could, I or or a couple of us, or maybe we alternate like the farmers market. Drop drop in like figure out how to engage, ask questions, see if the teens will even talk to us. <laughs> well, it kind of brings up that question of like also potentially having a board member be. We had talked about it in the spring yes. and then we oh, sort of set let's table program. that and do it in the fall mm -hmm. but maybe uh, um i know there was a lot of you had a lot of ideas about how to potentially or who to reach out to to do that 
maybe we just like accept letters and do the same thing like we are doing with other board seats. We just put a poster up or something and have them send an email out, whoever that would be, the principal, and then just accept letters of interest. Yeah, I think that would be great. Do you want me to reach out about that? The to student Renee? Student board members, maybe? Yeah. yeah, student yeah. board members. Not, there's not a lot of people knocking on the door to, to take that on. Um, the person is Matt McLean, not Renee. Ms. Matt is the director of Flexible Pathways, and we run that through the Flexible Pathways mm. programming. So I'll, I'll connect with you. Yeah, it would be good to recall the that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it might be nice to not have it be only like a flexible pathway thing, like a. It's like, not. Matt just knows that Matt has is has closely connected to all the students around what interests are. Yeah. And things like he just knows the student body in that way. Okay. So he's just the best person to do it. Okay. But yeah. It's so not technically a flexible pathway. So I'll reach have out we, to you. Have we ever considered a middle school student? We we've had them on subcommittees. They were yeah, we've had them on the, um, subcommittees. The facilities, the school building. I think it becomes the night meetings become a little more of a challenge when you get to the middle school level. Um, but it's worth. It's worth yeah, if Mike Barry has any ideas or someone. Um, I mean, I have a few students that I would yeah. love to have. Who are brilliant, but um, I mean, I, I think the idea of having a letter of intent, if people are interested, just like makes it a little more exciting mm -hmm. for students to participate that way. So I'll reach out to Libby and kind of work on it behind the scenes and then come back to the drawing board with you guys at the next meeting. Is Matt McLean also the one to ask about um, what to, um, sporting events, if we, we wanted to put a table there? Or it would be it? Matt Link. Matt Link, thank you. <laughs> And we will go through you for that? Yeah, you just CC me. You just reach out to me. I can take that one on. Oh, okay. You actually get a lot of parents as part of your so. I'd be willing to write an op ed and certainly run it by everyone before publication, but if that's helpful. Right. Question is an op ed is does it make sense to do an op ed now or when we have. Um, a budget so. to sell. Maybe at both. least the front porch forum for sure. Yeah. To try to drive people to the web page to submit ideas. And then yeah, definitely that makes sense when we have something we're offering. <laughs> or to announce like something we're offering. <laughs> find us at the farmers market this Saturday or something. Yeah. Could be that yeah. what you use that for. So maybe with all this we can like come up with some schedule. Once we have like the ideas of like, here are the pleaded spaces. Here's how you can take part of these conversations. In Roxbury, boom, boom, boom. In Montpelier, boom, boom, boom. We'll also have a presence these days at this table in events. Come talk to us. Mm -hmm. And do we have to compile this in some sort of a report to meet the requirements? Is that we just have to? There's no requirement for it. I'm just looking at the schedule. It. Like we, in order to build the budget and take uh, community feedback into consideration, we need it, we need the administration would need it by the board meeting of the 20th of October and no later than that. So a quick turnaround. Yeah. October 20th. I mean, I think it doesn't, this work needs to happen regardless of budget season yeah. to know the feedback of the community so we can have some of it and we can have you know others afterwards i don't think we should limit ourselves to like we have two weeks to do all these things i think this is a way for us to start really having becoming really that bridge and that people can see us as the open door so i think that we could do a lot short term before October 20th, but also we shouldn't limit ourselves and we should actually plan to do this ongoing, ongoing mm -hmm. yeah. so that we could have that community feedback and build something that is like, that can help with the visioning process when once that begins, which is a six month process, and it just becomes a, you know, mm -hmm. a, a platform of data collection from our communities. Yeah. 
So the October 20th, you're saying, Libby, is about ideas or input for the for budget creation. Right. right. There's still time for budget feedback after October 20th. Yeah, the yeah. initial budget presentation to the board by the administration is the 1st of December. Okay. But that takes a while to put together. Yes. Yeah. So, so if... Uh, and that is not... October 20th is not ESSER feedback. No, no. No, it's just budget. Budget. Budget okay. season. Yeah. Yeah. But, and I totally agree, Amanda, that this should just be start part of the board culture of like just mm -hmm. creating space for people to talk to us. But just so you know, the, the first presentation is the first, and you give feedback on that presentation. And then we take that feedback and we bring back another presentation, which is often similar, but yeah. it has the, your feedback in it and on the 15th of yep. December. Yeah. And we take more feedback. If you have a, and exactly then, right. Yeah, so, so there's it's ongoing. Of, yeah, except yeah. if you want. Once we present on the first, like, yes, the budget You're tweaks and all that kind of stuff, but we're not reinventing that budget yeah. going forward. Gotcha. Yeah, and we've often done a separate kind of early January, um, like a special meeting you have to, to try it. to entice the public. Um, yeah. Yeah, where we've brought in like pizza and, you know, just taken feedback. And that's, that meeting is more or less like the last opportunity to really because it has to get warned and all yep. that kind of stuff. Yeah, and that's scheduled for the 1st of January. Okay. That would be so cool. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, I'm sorry. The first meeting. The 5th of January. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> the first meeting in January. Saturday. It's the way we bring everyone in is to just... <laughs> yeah. Do that deal. Yeah. It's always the holiday. Um, one, I'll be wearing my sleeping bag. One other thought that I have is that even though there are lists of places and gatherings that are in Roxbury, I would, I myself would like to attend some of those, and I would mm -hmm. encourage other Montpelier members who live in Montpelier to come to those, and also Kristen and to come to some of the Montpelier stuff. That we yeah. should be doing both. We should yep. be in both places because we represent the whole community. Yep. Correct. So process question around that. So if there's more than two board members present at any sort of meeting, does it need to be warned? Is that? It needs to be warned if you intend to talk. If you just want to absorb okay. and let someone else lead the event, there are going to be as many board members as possible. But once you start engaging in the discussion, that becomes a Can you give like an introduction as to what type of feedback we're looking for? And then sit back and listen, or or is that too much? No, I think you can do that. I think you if can't one, answer I think, questions. I think if one person did that and kind of like laid the foundation and said, you know, here's here's the process, here's what we're looking for, here's input that would be good. We're yeah. here to listen. We can't speak because it was a board meeting. Yeah. And then you sit back and you listen. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Um, is it strict listening, or or there's not even a Follow up question: or What do you mean? Or I think if you if you answer like a like a basic tell me more about that question. Mm -hmm. I think I think if if it's like purely informational, I think once it starts to look like mm -hmm. brainstorming, then it becomes problematic. If okay. you have more than one board member, if, if, if you, you have, have more, more than two, two. more than two board members, I see. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to want to make sure we have a place to compile when we do start creating a schedule. We want to have a place where people can see that so that if you want to attend, yeah. mm -hmm. then you can. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I like making flyers, so I can make a flyer, mm -hmm. and then we can just change the dates uh, mm -hmm. and like the name of the places. I'll just make a generic, so like if you want to do that, you can you know, like farmer's market, and we'll just change the date. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much for creating this. Yeah, no, this is awesome. fantastic. Yeah. yeah, and then, you know, look at some more of these if you want to, you know, start doing outreach, just send an email so people know so we're not creating efforts, but, um, you know, obviously the more groups and people we talk to, the better. Uh, you can also add me to the list for the principal swoop scoop. Um, for more of the outbound um, 
engagement. I, I imagine it's something like the Caregivers Alliance has announcements in like every other one of the swoop scoops that go out. It, I think it would be nice if the board did as well. And Libby, do you know where you stand? Where does the school stand right now? Like I see one of the things is about open hours at the MHS library. Is Would that have to be outside of school hours? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But the idea being hope that we're hopeful to attract students to that is what I'm thinking. So maybe it would be better to just have open hours outside of the high school or something. We should talk about what makes sense of how to like create a public presence for students to engage with us. I think if you were, yeah, we can talk about that. And Matt and Renee would probably know better than I do. But I think student schedules are so different. Right. Um, and so and we're really trying to limit some things, but if you were to do things out in the courtyard directly after school, mm. you know, it's a nice yeah. space, there's lots of seating, and mm -hmm. all that. if it's directly connected to school time, that would probably be better, or you can hang out in the tent during the lunch hours <laughs> if you wanted to. Not a bad idea. <laughs> Yeah. They don't um, have enough time to eat. <laughs> oh, the high schoolers do. <laughs> so I will explore that. Yeah. With you. Yeah, and Matt and Renee would probably Matt. be okay. better in that conversation than I would. But that there's definitely free time for high school students. We would just have to make it known who you were. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that kind of good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Zorn, what's your mom doing here? <laughs> and you exactly. It's <laughs> good. Good vantage point to spy. Sorry, I know that the U.S. Caregivers Alliance is flying outside for like their meetings and just like a welcoming thing. So I wonder if is that something you could do too? Just like fly. I'm a school board member. Do anything. Sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. You mean during drop off and pick up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can ask Peter about that when I email about the scoop scoop. One that had great appeal to me because it just seemed like it would be so much fun is riding the bus with the kids. <laughs> and is that a real offer? I would love to know because the rock story, you have 30 minutes with a captive audience from here to there. Is that allowable? Um, I can't see why we couldn't allow that since uh -huh. you're a school board member, not uh -huh. a, just, you know, I, sure. I don't think parents would be happy if other people were riding the bus with right. their children. Right. Um, I will tell you that if you're riding to Montpelier in the morning, a little sleepy the of a crowd. are not exactly <laughs> um, exuberant yes. at that time, and in the afternoon they may be too exuberant right, <laughs> to really right. talk to you. Um, Maybe an early release day. So right I mean, the sweet spot. <laughs> if you wanted to. It would be an interesting. It would be, it would be yeah. <laughs> it just it just looked so fun. And many Felt nostalgic. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I've been thinking about the Roxbury teen population too because I think initially when I joined, we were you know I was asking about the number of Roxbury <clears throat> middle school and high school students, and I was kind of astounded. It was like forty six, which somewhere it's not, that, it's not that high now. Oh, well, yeah, actually, if you're talking about yeah, middle, middle school, school and high school, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, so, you know, in our community, we don't have as much of it. There's not many places for young folks to be visible. You know, we don't have, like, a lot of commerce. We don't have a lot of places for them to be. So I'm, I'm very interested in trying to reach out to our Roxbury kids and possibly look at the library as being a space to host some sort of, you know, Q&A platform with them because I think their experience is also somewhat unique because they're coming back and forth and... Um, they're new to the district, so I would love to hear, you know, how their experience is going and what's been happening for them. So I will take that on too. You can add that to my list. Yeah. I wonder if you could arrange the bus ride as not just you being on the bus, but you just speaking on the bus and asking for feedback kind of conversation. Yeah. I think the, that's probably the best way to get it. The high schoolers from, sorry, sorry. I know the uh, high schoolers from Roxbury get to school early. Yep. Um, because they get, because they have, we have to have the middle schoolers there by eight, and the high school schedule doesn't start till eight thirty. Start, start, yeah. So that's another piece. yeah window. I, I think they hang out in the cafeteria uh -huh. from eight to eight thirty. Okay. So it might be another opportunity that might be a little bit more structured than being on the bus. Right. Um, and you might have a more willing audience. Yeah. Can I give them a donut? 
I don't know. An apple. An apple with some peanut butter. An apple donut. Yeah. An apple donut. Banana with peanut butter. Banana with peanut butter. Um, I'm definitely happy to give it a, any caregiver's alliance and be a second person. Um, yeah, same. And schedule those, you know, others as, as well. Uh, it would be great to brainstorm with uh, Matt McLean about how we can attract students here, like what would entice them. To so become board members? Yeah. Yeah, um, he'd be the best person to talk to about that. Yeah, because I have a feeling that the there was a little self-perpetuating machine that COVID kind of killed. It just yes. the, mm. you know, the students, you know, the students who are moving off, like you know, recruited either a junior or sophomore to come yes. on. Um, and I think we've lost that. And now it's like I'm going to sit with adults on my Wednesday night and hear about really boring things. No thanks. Because <laughs> uh, I'm interested in the middle school. Yes. Get them young. <laughs> do you want me to? Um, do you want to be part of those conversations when I reach out to Libby about? Yeah, if it works, I definitely would be. I mean, just if there is any. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, kind of if we could structure it as like a for credit project. If, you know, there's certain things that if we told them they were going to do, they'd be really excited about. What about college applications? That doesn't, isn't a thing anymore? I feel like. It's a huge thing. It's yeah, huge thing. so like people are looking for things to put on their resume. Yeah, I, I'm sure we can find someone. There's some really great students at Montpelier yeah. High School too. I think we're going to find someone. Yeah, no, we, and we, the ones we had when we had them were fantastic. And, yeah. Um, we would give them space to present almost meaningful. It was every meeting. Yeah. Well, they yeah. would be a good resource for us to keep that channel of communication alive yeah. between other students, you know. Yeah. They could help us do that. Yeah, so. Um, and, and the students that were in your the public safety committee. Amazing. Really amazing. Really amazing. Yeah. yeah. I did try to recruit them, actually. <laughs> yeah, they did kind of a hard sell. One of them did, yeah. yeah. But they're busy, too. I mean, kids are busy, and they have sports and other extracurricular activities. So That's one of the challenges is a lot of kids who would be interested in the school board also play sports or yeah. do theater. Yeah. And yeah, so that's what it is. But we'll figure it out. We'll find someone. Yes. So with this, okay. Annika, what would you like to do? <laughs> Jill, okay. you got an op-ed. What else? Um, I was thinking I would like to do the um, either sports events or the Caregivers Alliance if that's not already covered. I'm already going to field hockey games. <laughs> I'm happy to go to more things like that. It would be nice if somebody went to the UEA so that I can wear a bowl cap. And I think Tina Muncy would want me to volunteer to go to the senior center, so I would be happy. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Great. <laughs> I'll do the um, high school games and farmers markets. Great. Yeah. I think we should sign Andrew up to go to the senior center with Kristen, because I think the two of them would be great at the senior center together. With Joe, you mean? I'm sorry, with Joe. It's like yes. <laughs> I think they'd be great at the senior center. We do go to the senior, before COVID, the administrative team goes to the senior center to, once the budget is cooked to, yeah. to answer questions and serve lunch and things like that. It's Grant Geisler's favorite thing to do. Yeah. Well, and, <laughs> and Mike Berry's. <laughs> and they, a couple times I went there as a board member, it's, it's one of the bigger audiences. They're, oh, they are the most no articulate, kidding. educated audiences. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I wonder if the city council is a place mm. where we can mm. like take the, up their public comment and every of the city council meetings is like, here's what you guys need to know about the school board, boom, 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 or something like that, or just like ask that. Oh, but we have the same day, no? City yeah, council are the same day as the school board? Or the alternate? Yeah. Kristen and Red, isn't there a senior center here too? There is a senior center, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. oh, nice. the kids go there. We yeah. have potlucks. There may be a potluck October 2nd. Certainly, that could be a place to solicit information and, and interest. Which Addy's just trying to bribe you guys for your vote now. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm on now. Oh, great. Um, I can do all the like community organizations that are that work with some of our youth here, like the Vermont Center for Independent Living. 
and the uh, and outright Vermont are the two that I know. Great. Excellent. Thank you for doing Jim, that. Jim, what did you sign up for on the Friends of Montpelier School? Farms <laughs> and the Boosters. Boosters. Of high school. Okay. And, and he's I, also, also volunteering to help deal with the recruitment of future student board okay. members. And be a possible second at, at MSMS or UES characters. Okay. He's also definitely doing coffees and <laughs> farmers markets. <laughs> when the when the sign of genius is ready, he's he's on that. I should ask Willow once, can I just have a table right here? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I eat anyway. Might as well, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> can I just Take a shingle. <laughs> <laughs> did we? Do we want to brainstorm questions now, or do that over email? What were you thinking? How are we doing with the agenda? We're good. We're good. We're Although I would take the time to do it. Now. Is, yeah. The, yeah. is the Let's thought exchange a presentation, Libby? It's not a presentation. It? I just wanted you to have the link to that. That's okay. a resource that we have purchased with SR2 money, um, and just take a look at it. We're, it's it not good. in our hands yet, but yeah. uh, once the bill is paid, it will be. We, just, we had to wait for the amendment to get approved. Um, it's a really cool, it's like Google survey on steroids. It's a mm -hmm. really cool tool that we'll have at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. um, so once I get the 401 of how to work it, um, it's certainly at the board's, you know, you all can certainly use it as well oh, for great. your board work. That's awesome. Um, That's all great. For anything. It's, I mean, just a, if you haven't had a chance to look at it for the public, it's just a really brief, like, you can ask a question. You can either be in a meeting together and ask a question, or you can do it virtually without the meeting taking place synchronously. Mm -hmm. And people chat in answers to the questions, and that you can rate people's answers, and you can answer. You can talk back to oh, it. Wow. So you can see, like, which themes rise to the top as the most prioritized. Um, mm -hmm and what people are saying to each other mm -hmm. about it. Uh, so it's a really, I've only seen little demos of it, but it's a super cool tool um, right. for getting um, engagement from people. Right. Me. Okay. So let's do some questions. I'm ready. <laughs> These are questions we're asking ourselves or questions we want? The questions we want to pose to the... Um, I mean, a good one is is list the, the top three things you'd like to see more investment in. Okay. I'd ask for specifics too, if I could. So, if somebody says social emotional health. I'd always follow up with, could you tell me more about what you're envisioning? And maybe some questions around values too, like what are the, you know, what are some of the values that you think should be driving our spending decisions? So, that should be driving our spending decisions? Yeah. goes so much priorities, but I think it's a little different. So are we mostly trying to generate questions that are focused on budget for now because that's the most immediate? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Is it, do we want to also like just hear what are your top concerns? Yeah. Your top three concerns? Maybe they only have one. <laughs> And do these all need to be framed within COVID-19? It looks like these are intended to prepare for, prevent, and respond to COVID-19. No. Yeah. That's for no. our best search. Yeah. No, that's why it was like budget. beyond yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we could frame up that, you know, some of these funds are tied to expenditures around COVID-19. So, you know, in addition to other things, you know, it's, it's you've got specific ideas around that, that would be super helpful. I think it would also be nice to know, like, what's 
if we're talking to a student, like what's the best thing about school? Or what's, I don't know if it's your favorite thing, or what's like... The strengths. What's the thing that you're getting the most out of right now? Yeah. I don't want to frame it as just favorite, because you know they might just all say PE right, or recess or whatever. But it's, there's nothing wrong with that. Which is, you know, I understand they have very, those are very valuable. But I also want to know more like, it's not just what it is that you like about school, but it's like what's helping you get the most out of it. Which I don't know, maybe that's a hard. Yeah, I don't know. But that's that's why I was trying to frame the question in that way. I think also as students, like what, yeah, what don't you like? And they're, as well as students, you might get some kind of infrastructure or building type things that you might not get with the general public. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh my gosh, the locker rooms are you know, awful, although they're not. More <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> coming, Jim! <laughs> but there was a time when they were like pretty gross, yeah. and like, who would know that? Mm -hmm. The only caveat to that would be that it, any kind of document you make, remember it's a public facing document and you don't want any teachers' names in there. Yeah. Oh no. Oh yeah. No. We, we will a, make sure yeah. that we Just have. a reminder. Yeah, yeah. I think from adults in the community too, it would be interesting to know sort of what they are seeing that's working really well in the schools, what they think is, um, you know, what they value the most in their experience with the schools. So kind of like the student question, but just for, mm -hmm. for adults also, I think it's important to know. In terms of data collection, do you um, do we ask the same ten questions to every single group? Mm. You know, like, are we do we have a sign at the farmers market that says, "Here's our top ten questions"? Give us feedback. You know, like, we could yeah, and there we can always have be open ended. Composite ended. people can record and send us like WhatsApp chat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we do that. A voice recording. <laughs> so yeah. It's like, here are my top ten concerns. I don't know. That's just a question for data people. Andrew's not here. I think it's going to end up being more qualitative anyway, even if we do ask the same question. People are going to be giving open-ended long answers, so it's, I don't know if we're going to be able to do like a quick analysis of like, 86%, you know, <laughs> but if we ask the question about like, what are your top three priorities, we can sort of list that out. I was kind of wondering the same thing from a data standpoint of like, do we want to present people with choices? Like here are all the sort of buckets of funding that we typically, you know, put money into. Um, what are your top three? But it might be more valuable to leave it open-ended. I, I think, I, in my opinion, I just I think that we should have, I think this is a beginning of a real community engagement process yeah. and I think like we should have that just like be open yeah mm -hmm. especially because like we already know that there are certain things that the district needs to spend mm -hmm. its money on and so like this is like I think of this process as just like beyond the actual money that we have this year or the budget but that it helps us see what the community is like envisioning that it gets tied in with the visioning process with the consultant mm -hmm. that, like it gets tied in with the budget process that Lydia has with the administration so I think it's just like the beginning of really listening and then creating those thematic things where we can see hey there's like we already heard that the special ed needs a lot of support how do you know like we heard a lot of that so how do we go about and, what are the tools that the administration is already doing? What are the things that we need to do? 
I could see value in using um, a method like we used at our retreat in terms of like a stickies board. You know, if you're going to have like a large volume of people going through. I mean, I know that we we would love to dig into substance, but some people may not feel comfortable um, in that and would rather kind of stay somewhat anonymous. So just to give people not like the questions are visually posted and then folks can ruminate and maybe they can just, you know, stick their sticky and like get on their way. And if you also are having a traffic jam, there's a lot of people, you know, building up. It gives people still, a, you know, at least a quick way to, to chime in. It doesn't allow for follow-up, but it at least maybe could, you know, initiate some thinking around some topics. Yeah, no, about three or four years ago, we did a, a bombs thing like that in the basement of a Kelly covered library. And it was, you know, people put sticky notes with kind of like, each one had you know, three things that they wanted the school to focus on budget-wise, and they just, yeah, you know, wrote a run down, put it on the board, and then they kind of like lined them up in groups, and it was it was pretty clear where priorities. Mm -hmm. I feel like it was like six or seven years ago. Huh? <laughs> Maybe six or seven years ago now. No, yeah, it was before me. Don't, don't tell me that. Yes, <laughs> it was before me. <laughs> the oh, years okay. are ticking away. Who? Ticking and, away. Anybody wants to go to the library? Maybe? Huh? The library is a good place. You mean like a table, just just to drop in and see? Drop in, talk to the librarian so that they can help with, you know. In terms of like almost leaving like something like that up yeah. for a yeah. period of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, I could see that working here as well. I thought you felt like a drop box in the library. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it safe to say that the board's role is the, the public facing and that the administration um, is, is engaging with the staff and educators on take, getting their input on the budget development? I'm just looking through this um, public engagement piece and it mentions educators and I... Mm. And that, Again, that's for our professor, right? So we generally work with the principals who know their buildings pretty well, right? I mean, to think that there's a lot of wiggle room in the local budget isn't, accu isn't right. an accurate thought, right? There's not, because most of it is salaries and benefits. Um, so, of staff we already have. So there's, a, there's not a huge amount of wiggle room to play with here, right? So um, it, it's the administrator's responsibility to truly think about what are the priorities that we need. We're starting that process on Monday, you know, with our big brainstorming session um, and they bring their, their teachers' voices to that table as well. With our professor, we're starting those conversations too next week actually. We're around some different spaces with individual teaching teams. Thank you. So I'll send this out. If you guys have any questions you can reply to me and then I'll put it up, I'll do the flyer and then like come up with some schedule that people I'll send it to Emma so she can do a genius. Because she's good at that. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank yeah, you. This is, this is great. It's always good to have a year where we can start getting back and seeing people. <laughs> um, let's move to policy monitoring. Uh, we now have three. We have 15 student attendance, F14 student freedom of expression, and whatever dissection. Animal dissection. Animal dissection. I, I don't know the G5. Number. G5. Thank you. Just pull it up. Um, and you uh, do you have a motion to approve the student attendance monitoring report? I'll move to approve. Oh, I have a question. Oh, wait. Oh, we can, we can do that during discussion. Approve this. Student attendance monitoring report. Do you have a second? I'll second. second. Yep. Um, not sure who said that. <laughs> we both did. Simultaneously. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, discussion? I have a few questions. Um, what I got was the procedure. That, that's what, right? Mm -hmm. For that which was one? Pr procedure in the. Attendance procedure was in our board packet. In our yeah. board packet. Mm -hmm. And and so, I have a question regarding the truancy procedure. This one that was on the website, um, and what was my question? 
put it in like a dark picture. Okay, and, and so there is, um, it is 16 past this year, a couple of months ago, which is the discipline um, bill that passed, which created a working group that's looking at discipline data and suspensions, but also has a piece on truancy. And it has um, a data reporting clause that the, that the uh, schools will report to the agency of education every year the reporting of truancy and like what was done and so I, I didn't see that in the in the procedure itself that of the data collection piece that procedure that you have in your hand that's uh, still on our website the truancy procedure no. yeah that's given to us by the courts okay so that's not ours that we have written okay so that's given us to the courts and they haven't given up they it's not the most facile system, yeah. so so that's that's the last update that was given to us, and okay. yeah, it most likely is out of date because we're working with the court system on that. Like they give it to us. Okay, and then and so when I was reading the procedure, um, there it's in this in this sheet, it says uh, level one and level two students have missed ten or more days in any twelve week period. Mm -hmm. But in our procedure itself, too many papers. Uh, it doesn't specify the twelve-week period. So I'm, I, I just wanted to understand. We might just have missed that in the okay. procedure part. Okay. Yeah. Because it's like, so if I miss five days in twelve weeks, if I'm sick or like if on a skills, right? Like mm -hmm. then, can I miss like ten days through the year? So that that's what I didn't read. Okay. Between this sheet and this procedure, I would. I actually didn't recognize. I, we're going to take that one down the court one because it's okay. so out of date. Okay. So I, and we'll reach out to the courts to child Nick reach out to the courts to try to get a new one. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Because the last meeting I had with the courts around that was probably my first year of my superintendency. Okay. So that's what that's from. So it's four years old, and I, I actually didn't even realize it was still up there. Um, so we're going to take that down. Thank you for pointing okay. that out to me, Amanda. Great. Um, and I can find clarity on the 12-week 12, 12 piece Okay. Thank um, you. for our procedure. And just to clarify is that if a kiddo is sick, that's an excused absence, that's right? right? That's, yeah. that's not an unexcused absence. So truancy is dealing with unexcused absences. Okay. So I just want to when a court gets involved in truancy, who's, who's the enforcement against? Is it against the guardian? Yeah. Yeah. And to say the court gets involved with truancy is um euphemistic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Uh, really optimistic of you. Yeah. <laughs> that just doesn't happen. Yeah. I had a question about um so I know there was mention of the community liaison, I think is yeah. the position that came through ESSER, and it's probably too early to tell whether or not that's being Are successful you yet. Me? Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, cool. Um, but so I'm just curious if that position is using any, you know, I know there's, I didn't go as far as Amanda to dig up that truancy um, procedure, but I remember it was mentioned and I wondered what that looked like or how archaic it was and wondered if the community liaison is, like, what approaches or new approaches as does this individual envision using and will we kind of see at some point the outcomes of that? The truancy, there's very, like, that's, that's outlined for us by the courts. I mean, there's very how you the, can go about right what the procedure is. Okay, Proce you know when the letters are sent home and all that kind of stuff. Like, sure. We don't have a whole lot of wiggle room there. Yeah. Um, Nick currently is a phenomenal hire. I'll have, have him come talk to you guys one night because he's he's super. Um, he's technically got a caseload of four students right now, maybe a couple more. Mm -hmm. um, and he is building relationships with them. He's at their houses. He's got kids texting him to make a connection. Most of the kids are just not willing to leave their house for anything. Mm -hmm. um, and so, our, you know, he's making the goals he should be making. The first goal is to, let's go outside. Let's go for a walk. Mm -hmm. you, know, like, you know, let's do that kind of stuff. Um, he's very, he has a lot of experience with this in Colorado and in Montpelier before he went to Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, I can imagine, I haven't seen him work with kids yet, but I can imagine they just love him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's joined our equity team. Um, 
he's working with kids who are having a hard time, even if they get themselves to school, they are refusing to get into any type of class. Um, and so he's connecting with that, those students as well. Um, he's just a fantastic, fantastic hire. Great. Great um, hire. So I'll have to have him come talk to you. As far as like envisioning new procedures and things like that, I think he just, he needs to learn more mm -hmm. than what, you know, he just needs to learn the procedures sure. now, you know. Um, so, but yeah, he's, I'll have him come talk to you guys one night because he's great. That will be great. great. Thank you. And so for the, I, I guess the, the last piece will be like the data reporting. Um, yeah, well, when the law comes through, we'll make sure okay. that that policy will probably, the student attendance policy may have to be updated. Yeah. Well, that already passed, that piece of it. I know, but we haven't gotten any written guidance on it. Oh, okay. You know, we've gotten the written guidance around suspension. Uh -huh. We got that just last week, to give you a sense, right, uh -huh. so that the law passed a while ago, but the written guidelines on that just came by, came through, um, I think on Friday. Well, who writes the guidance? Yeah. Oh, he does? Oh, okay. So that, that's the no child under eight should be right. suspended. Right. right. Yeah. Yep. So when they send through for a truancy, then we'll let you know if the policy needs to be updated. Oh, thank you. Okay, that's all I have. Great. Any other uh, questions, discussion around the student attendance policy? Uh, all those in favor of approving the monitoring report? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, thanks. Um, F14, uh, student freedom of expression in school sponsored media. Do you have a motion to approve the monitoring report? I'm already approved the monitoring report, F14. Uh, do you have a second? I'll second that. Um, any discussion? Two brief questions. Probably for Libby. Um, is there any like media literacy courses or curriculum that's available to students? Especially, I have to get back to you about specifically okay. what we offer. Um, yeah, yeah. I can speak to my middle school daughter. It's very and it may show up. You know, not be specifically. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty impressive. Actually, yeah, they, cool. they learn a lot about digital footprint, about questioning sources. But it's sort of embedded in their yep. ELA and social studies. Yep. Yeah, we do have a curriculum for digital citizenship. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. Um, and that course is pretty comprehensive in covering sort of like what you would ex want it to cover for a yeah. middle school student yeah. in terms of like... High schools, high schools. It, it's actually a K-12 oh, okay. K yeah, curriculum. Yeah, my first grader came that. home <laughs> with, the, with the worksheet yeah, the, the other day. It only came on my radar last year for... Right? Yeah noticing that my kid was in it but anyway it's it was um but it was really great because there was like asking questions that exactly the type of like about sexting and yep. you know what's appropriate to post online and how your footprint sort of lives with you forever and yep. that those kinds of conversations great in at eighth grade level in regards to media literacy and like critical thinking, is that what you're asking? No, more about? along the lines of what we're talking Digital about, just that kids are being, you know, they're being tooled up, you know, with the ability to navigate this media yeah. heavy yeah. world that we now live in. When we first got here, there wasn't anything, and that was a main thing for Mike Barry yeah. to do yep. in the last couple of years. And um, it, it lives with our media specialists yep. right now. They kind of own it, but but it is, I know Don Taylor was doing things in the sustain. It's kind of gone through that route at the yep. middle school along with um, Katie Chabot. And it, it's mainly housed with the media specialists Great. helping the teachers embed. But there, there's mandatory things that all kids have to do. Great. Too. Okay. And a lot of the global citizenship um, standards are based around like identifying bias in a source mm -hmm, yeah, or yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know um, being able to recognize when a source is credible and yeah. yep. being able to weigh different perspectives on the same issue that type of thing yep. so that's being taught across the board in global citizenship okay. thank you my other question was is there a student newspaper or a blog that we could ever see that would just be mm -hmm. like an example of what last year we did have one at the high school uh-huh I don't know if there is one. I have not heard of one yeah. yet this year. Okay. Um, Mr. Tillotson told me he's Soren's TA. <laughs> There's going to be one? Is he the advisor? He was on, yeah. 
yes. the advisor, so it's probably in the works. <laughs> okay. But, um, it's in the works. Yes. I think he's on the list tonight. We signed up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's like, on the consent agenda. So if Jerry's doing it, then yeah, there, there will be a, a newspaper coming out. It's just Fun. early in the school year and I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. So. Okay. Great. Thanks. Any other uh, questions, comments, discussion? Uh, all those in favor of approving F14 student freedom of expression at school policy media? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, thanks. And then <laughs> E5, animal dissection. Um, I move to motion. I make a motion to approve yeah. the animal dissection policy and monitoring report. I'll second. Any discussion? So there was some discussion about this at the policy committee um, meeting, and we just had some questions around the procedure. So it says that we, our policy reads that we will develop procedures, but we were not able to, so I don't know if the word procedure, I'm thinking of procedure in terms of the procedures that are listed with the policy on our website with the policy. But if this is more of a loose definition of procedure in terms of like yeah. just the science teacher themselves need to like develop something. The science teachers ask. Yeah. yeah. So I can put that in like procedure language, but it would be like one sentence. The science teachers will ask before every yeah. dissection. We thought it would be good for the public to be able to. I also looked in the um, handbooks that were available online, but the one from this year isn't quite up yet, right? Or wasn't when I looked. When did you look? A couple weeks ago. It's up there now. <laughs> Anna did before she left. So I didn't see any um, talk about dissection in either the curriculum for the science courses or anything like that. So we just felt like at, at the the people in the policy committee felt like it would be appropriate for that information to be sort of publicly accessible for parents and you know students to be able to look at mm -hmm. based yeah. on the policy language and the and the law. It sounded like. Um, in the statute that it was sort of requiring that to be accessible. So um, I don't know if that means, like I've never really run into this with any of your policy monitoring reports. I don't know if that means that we should reconsider saying that we're compliant <laughs> or if we should just say that that was our reading, our reading of it or your reading of it was that it can just be a policy, a procedure developed by the Small science teacher key and um, expressed to the students. It does say, um, I think it, the law talks about parents also, or uh, guardians having notifications, so I don't know if that's happening. Anyway. Well, we didn't do any animal dissection <laughs> last year, so, <laughs> so there wouldn't have been any notification last year. Okay. But I can certainly put a procedure. Yeah, I think that would be good. And then I'm fine just interpreting it that way for now and then moving forward. Mm -hmm. Those are connected. Yep. Okay. Any other questions, comments, discussion regarding animal dissection? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And then we have two policy readings, which I don't think we actually read. Just the, um, our reading, but uh, first reading of policy E01, fiscal management, and E02, budget execution. And just for a quick summary, these uh, policies are being um, updated to reflect uh, small changes in basically federal register citations and a few other just updates to make them fully compliant with current law. I don't think anyone wants to add to that, but um, they're posted if the public wants to look at them and weigh in without two more readings. So Jim did, so Andrew, the, um, is it the budget committee? Is that what it's called? Finance. Finance, finance, finance committee. committee. The finance committee, the, these went to the finance committee first. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so it was my understanding that Grant, along with the finance committee, um, made, tweaked and made the changes necessary. Yep. Mm -hmm. I just don't know where to look 
<laughs> on this document to know, when it, like, yeah, when it got downloaded as a PDF, the red ink, the strikeouts and stuff like that. I think the red went away. Okay. I was wondering about that. Okay. I mean, I tend to just have complete faith in our finance committee and grant to make the changes necessary. For the second reading, I'll make sure that the well, I'll put cross outs or something. Okay, yeah. Downloaded as a PDF. It'd be good to be able to bring your eye straight to the changes because yep. they're long yeah. policies. I was wondering if that happened. Maybe take the time to look. Um, they were in our board packet in the last meeting, and those strike and those were, were yeah. there. But but there were yeah. some changes okay. made. But there, those? then there were changes since then. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Um, we're gonna have this second reading in the next school board meeting, which is two weeks from now. Yep. So maybe we can put a post on front porch forum just to say policy, second reading of these policies, just like to give more to start kind of like seek input, to public seek input. input, or just to let them know that that's what we're gonna be doing, mm -hmm. so, so that people know. That those are the ones that are going to be we could just post our agendas on Front Porch Forum, which has all the policy yeah. stuff. That could be good That's practice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. We generally get those like on Friday mornings, let me. Right. Generally, yeah. I. Um, so I'm doing them now, and they take a, they take me approximately four hours. That's bananas. And I've obviously made two mistakes, <laughs> three mistakes each each week. Um, so I've I'm scheduled myself to do them Thursdays. Um, okay. So you you're getting them Thursdays because I'm sending them out as soon as I do them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it may be Fridays sometime. It's when I have a four-hour block of time mm -hmm. to, to do it either. I can't imagine Friday. any time you actually have a four-hour block, uh, block of time. It's blocked down during know. Anna's entire maternity leave. <laughs> I'll, I'll make a note for myself then for the that Friday before our next meeting to do the post on Front Porch Forum. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Mia. Yeah, great idea. Um, so now we're going to move into executive session, which I think will probably mean staying ask, here and moving to the Can I ask two questions? Sure. When you do a front porch forum, does it go to the Northfield front porch forum? Because that's the Roxbury front porch forum. Good question. I think it does. I'll take a look. Because I know it goes that's, to surrounding towns. Okay. I and think I that a lot of them do, but I don't know how it works necessarily. Yep. But yep. it's definitely two separate front porch forums. Yep. The other thing is, if when someone were to be elected to the school board, would they get some kind of how-to packet? Or <laughs> is this the, the, you know, 300 pages of stuff, and if it's 300 pages of rules specifically is a big thing. Like, what you can and can't do, that would be a priority to myself if I were to be. But um, how does that, is there a, you know, start with these five things are a priority the next 10 things or something like that is there a yeah i think the best thing to do um the vsba has some good kind of starter packets which are worth looking at vermont school boards association it's, it's literally called november yeah like vsba okay. VT. Do you org, training? i think is um okay. and they will send it to you they have a training, too, they, right? yeah, yeah, they, they, have a training. They, they will mail you a package if you want Hard copy. Um, they cool will video mail video. you all the things that you want. Uh, the the other uh, I would read through the policies. Um, you know, don't you don't have to read them like they're a novel. You know, have to you're not gonna absorb it. But it's good to just kind of familiarize yourself and, and pay attention to a couple things. There's a couple on like like board expectations, you know, board superintendent relations. Um, you know, pay attention. To, to that. Um, Let's vote first. <laughs> yeah, vote first. Well, we're, we're we're just talking theoretically at the moment. Um, I also give the new I also give the new member a call and yeah. take a walk with you or yeah. go out to lunch together or something and answer any questions you might have. Yeah, and I would be happy to take that member out to lunch as well. Um, <laughs> Uh, I didn't get any lunch. Sorry. 
Where's my little one? No, I'm happy to take anyone out to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're um, going to have a busy lunch schedule in the yes. next few weeks. <laughs> um, and the other thing that that person needs to do is they have to get sworn in before you can become an official member. And you can do it by phone, you can do it by person, but the, the town clerk needs to do that. And, and usually Anna would be reaching out yes. with an email address. Oh, I'll make yeah. sure that and, um And the swearing in yes. rules and the phone number to call and all of that stuff. So that's going to be half. Tammy Legacy is an excellent person to be sworn in by. Yes, <laughs> she does that's require great. in person. <laughs> she will not do it over the phone. Yeah. Um, she does. And, it and we used in to person. have yep. uh, Jim. Yep. Legend has it that there used to be like a mentorship yes. type of program happening. Well, I would call it a program. Tradition. But that has not happened, I don't think, since I came on. Uh, Jill, I, did you get a mentor? I did have a mentor. She's okay. going to volunteer to mentor. Did you? Be happy to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I did not get a mentor. I don't think yeah, Mia you, yeah. or Amanda yeah, I, or I Kristen. Think, yeah, I don't think so I we've, we've been, been like really <laughs> flying by the seat <laughs> of our pants yeah. since yeah. COVID. And initiation has been fast and furious yeah and then we uh, also have here. subcommittees so i think um and that would probably be a conversation with jim but if there's particular topics that someone is interested in being on a subcommittee there's always room on we have yeah. a negotiations committee we have policy committees we have equity committees we have lots of it wouldn't be this would it would that be something that might be more appropriate once there was an actual election wouldn't i just step into where jerry is because that's where the needs are or not i mean oh maybe filling the role can... on the committees she was on yeah like which I mean, committee she was on yeah i mean i think it's we've not got... a, actually you know it's sort of we filling. can discuss that right yeah we can discuss that there might I be some shuffling some, around there's, there's a little room for shifting um based on uh interest and in, i mean we have a few committees right now that uh you know, we have four members that could go down to three, or a fourth could drop off, and you could come on if you're really interested. Um, yeah, there's there's room for some shuffling. I would I would give some thought to what interests you, or you feel your strengths are. Okay. Um, but it uh, probably wouldn't happen for the, a few weeks. The new board members should think. The about new that. board members should think about that. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, welcome. Regarding the Front Porch Forum, so I do post our agenda to the Northfield Roxbury Front Porch oh, Forum okay. every week, so I don't know that you need to okay. click that box or... Look at Kristen, just... Hey! Already there. Just trying to get the word right out there. Ahead of the curve. <laughs> Excellent. Um, let's have a motion. Okay. Uh, we need two motions. We need a motion... Um, we need the Bridget motion, which is... I have it. We have it, <laughs> which is that it would be detrimental, basically something around the... It would be detrimental to the um, positioning of the board to discuss these matters in public or some such. Well, I thought I had it. Um, <laughs> I, I think something like that would... Because, of, because it's around... It's around negotiation. Negotiation. Contracts. Yeah. Contract relations. It would put, it would us, put the board in a disadvantage. In a disadvantage or a compromised okay. position yes. or something like that. Okay, I have it. Um, I pulled it too. You go for it. Okay. There's a lot of fill in the blanks that I'm not ready to do. <laughs> this is for the contract negotiation, right? Yeah. So I move to find a premature general public knowledge regarding the contracts with the unions would place the district at a substantial disadvantage because we risk disclosing our negotiation strategy if we discuss the proposed contract terms in public. Oh my gosh, it's like a channel, Bridget. Yeah. I second what he said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Uh, now we need to, a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of personnel and contract uh, negotiations. No, for the purpose of choosing a board member. I think is that broadly in personnel? I think. Could be. I think sure. I think a board member sure. matters personnel. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, yeah. I move we 
enter executive session for personnel and contract negotiation matters. Yeah. With the asterisk that personnel means choosing a board personnel member. Personnel from board <laughs> members. Um, Wait a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to nominate Rhett Williams uh, to the vacant, or motion to nominate someone to um, the vacant seat on the board, um, which uh, is the Roxbury seat expiring um, March of 2022. I move that the board appoint Rhett Williams to serve in the Roxbury position vacated by Jerry Huck through the finality of her term in March 2022. Do you have a second? I second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Congratulations, Rhett. Um, I'll thanks, Rhett. Yeah, yes. thanks, Rhett. <laughs> I will uh, send him an email and um, do have a motion to adjourn. Motion so, to adjourn. Uh, second. Okay, so, second. Oh. Sorry, just like, uh, can we just make a little plan to support him in his entrance? Real quick, like Jill can. I'd yeah, be happy I think to reach Jill's out. gonna be a mentor. I'll reach out for lunch. Um, Fun, how to kind of give him some. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just get yeah. Situated here in Roxbury. And then we'll, we can send that PowerPoint from. Um, yeah, from, from PSBA. PSBA yeah. for the board training. And he will need the swearing in an email. I do feel like Anna reminded me of that. Yeah. So. I'll get the email for him. Yeah. And uh, get him an email on. address. He's just gotta call Tammy. Oh, he must have emailed his letter, so. Okay. Yep. yep, we got his email. Okay. I second. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you.